welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. I'm Sammy Hagar, this is Roger Daltrey, and The Who just finished a sound check so we can start this show. Roger, thank you for doing this show, first of all. Good to see Pleasure. you, Pleasure, we've never met. Nope. 100 years we've been in the business, probably the same age, damn near, I know we're a year or two <laughs> apart, maybe, but. I think I'll get you beat. Eh, not by much. <laughs> well, you look better than me, so okay. How the fuck do you stay in such great shape? Your whole life, you had, you've had a six pack in the 60s. And uh, yeah, I, had, I had serious uh, gut problems when I was young. I swallowed a nail, uh, like a two-inch nail. That's with that big scar. Four-year-old, yeah. So when they cut that out when I was four, uh, they, in those days they used to have talcum powder on their gloves. And it, uh, so, you know, talcum powder creates incredible amounts of scar tissue. So my gut... There, he's just one big mass of scar tissue. But you've so it doesn't allow me to get a beer belly. Oh. Well, damn, I guess uh, maybe good, I should swallow you know, a nail. Yeah, that's it. Get the nails down you. <laughs> you know, you'll never be short of iron in your diet. And off you go. Uh, maybe I should have swallowed a nine-inch nail, but I missed that one. But, yeah, I, I'm getting the gut as I get older. And I stay in shape. I work out, and I, you know, I run, and I, I'm very active. But, man, I can't keep the gut away. And you're still up there with your damn shirt unbuttoned. I'm saying, look no, at I it. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, you know. don't? No, I mean... It must have been you old know. footage I just saw then, recently from no, I, somewhere. No, I, I used to do it a few years ago, but I know now I'm it, it, well into my 70s. I think well, now it's not quite dignified, is it? Big influence on me. Would you ever have believed when you were starting with The Who, when you guys are doing Fickin' My Generation and, and My Can See for Miles, which is one of my favorite Who songs where when you played that? Oh. Anyway, that you would be doing it at this stage and making more money than ever? No. No, thank you. I, 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 I'll I drink knew, to that. I knew that we'd have a... I knew, I always knew that we'd have a career. Uh, yeah, you had a career. No, 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 yeah, I always kind of knew that. Even when we, the early days when we were playing bar mitzvahs and weddings and all that kind of stuff, you know, as all bands do, you start in the pubs and the clubs and you move up to theatres and then you go to arenas and football stadiums, if you're lucky. Uh, did I think we'd still be going... I mean, Pete and I have been together now for 50, nearly 55 years. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is 55 years. Shit. It's phenomenal. That is unbelievable. It's phenomenal. <laughs> I heard about the classic fights, you know, and the who. Montrose opened for you guys at Charlton Festival in 1973 with uh, Humble Pie was after, before you and Lou Reed, us, Maggie Bell, and the first Bad Company show. Do you remember that show? Yeah, I can never forget that. That was a brilliant... Brilliant afternoon. 80,000 people. No, there well, it it was more than that. We were licensed for 70. Oh, you were paid on 80. We were, we, no, we, <laughs> no, we only had a license. We were doing it for, to, for money for a charity. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, that. And we only had a license for 70,000. But there were so many fans outside, they just ripped the doors off. And apparently, there were 120,000 pe people in that valley that day. We played the, 11 in the morning, it looked like. The London Council put up a plane to photograph it, and they did a head count. And they find us every penny that we made. Oh, yeah, Roger, seven, that's they, terrible. They, I don't, they I, did. They, found, they find us seventy thousand pounds. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we only made about a thousand pounds. Well, you made more than we did. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Yeah>. classic. <laughs> but I, the first time in London, was that my first time in London was on that Montrose tour in '73, and we went to a place called Speakeasy, or was it the Rainbow? What was, was the place that was uh, hip? There was a Speakeasy. 73. But that would have been the, the kind of last days of it. Well, it must have been, because let me tell you, sir, there was a line going up the street, so the whole Montrose band, the four of us, Ronnie, Denny, Bill Church, and myself, we went and got in line. We're all dressed up full rock stars, man. We're in fucking London now. And somebody comes and pulls us out of the line and says, oh, come on, come on, follow us, follow us. And they put us, give us this table, man. We're sitting up on the thing, man. They're bringing us food and shit. And they came back 10 minutes later and said, sorry, we thought you were Roger Daltrey. Ah! I swear to God, Roger, I swear on my life. I swear on my, my life. And fucking hell, they threw That's us true. out. I did. They really, <laughs> like, did they? Twice in my Shows life. Shows you what kind of taste they had. Oh. No taste whatsoever. Well, I looked like you. Is what I was trying to say, you know, is I, I really, when I first time I ever saw you, I said, I want my hair like that. I want to, I did your moves on stage. I dressed like you. And this is God's truth. I'm not ashamed to say it. The only thing I didn't do is this shit with the mic because that would have been a bust. Then I've been a bust. Yeah, yeah, but I always got London. criticized for looking like you. Uh, I got called you many times before I was who I am. But has anyone ever thought you were Sammy Hagar? No, they, I, think, <laughs> I knew it. I've been fucker. called Robert Plant, though. <laughs> <laughs> you Robert Plant? No, he's my uncle. <laughs>
John and Basal. I loved him. He, we shared our birthday in Cabo so many years. And Keith, I mean, you've lost two guys here, you and Pete, still going strong. Well, in that sense, we haven't lost them. That's the great thing about keeping, keeping going for Pete and I. Every, every time we start playing the music, oh. they're, they're, they're echoing in the music. They're echoing in the universe forever. And so they're kind of with us, you know. It's, it, you, but, we miss their personalities, how, how, obviously. Yeah, but how, how have you escaped sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Like you've been married well, I, all these years? I was years. in a band with three addicts. So you knew better then? <laughs> well, some, some buddy had to be tough and keep them in line, and it was, happened to be my job. That's what I did. I've heard that story so I, many times. That's what I did, but so I, and I managed to keep it on you the would be, uh, I heard that you were the toughest fucker in the band. I heard that you knocked Pete out one time. Oh, no, I'm bringing that one up. <laughs> Give me a sucker punch. <laughs> <laughs> but you were always in shape. I wouldn't want to fuck with you. But well, you, know, you guys still I, do, well, duke it out at all? You no, know? no. You're right? all too smart. There weren't that many fights. There weren't that many fights. I one bad one with Keith. There were little scuffles, you know. You know, <laughs> gent gentle thumps. <laughs> but there was only those two serious fights. And with the other, and I only hit Pete after incredible pro provocation. You know, after he hit me with a, you know, a Gibson over the shoulder, that was oh. my, glanced off my shoulder, Damn. missed my head. I was being held by two roadies who knew what I was like. <laughs> I had, had the I mean, most in, insane temper. And if, if, if I ever went off, it was like that two hours of energy in a show going off in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty. I ain't gonna mess with you, Roger. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, how, so uh, what button would and I have then to he push said, to get you let, mad? Let, let him go. I'll kill him. So they let me go. And then, he, they, like I say, he hit, he hit me with a guitar, which fortunately missed my head. And then, then he started punching, and he Pete can't fight, you know. <laughs> and he, 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 he threw a punch, which I went to one side, and he, he was all off balance, and I just went boof. <laughs> Next Have you told anybody else this kind of shit? Is this or no? Is it's well documented. And yeah, I, I mean, I've heard about it, but I've never. Well, according to our manager Bill, his feet actually left the floor, and he's always blamed me for his ball patch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to blame somebody. Hey, listen, somebody's got to be blamed. But it wasn't any. But the next day, I, I mean, I was in shock because I, you know, I just wanted to stop him hear me, but there he is laid out, and the next thing I know, I'm holding his hand on. Slap me like, oh, I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> so as long as you've been doing this, of course, you've got to be into philanthropy because you can't just keep doing it, take, 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 take. So how do you give back? What is your favorite uh, way? To... I got involved with a charity um, 27 years ago in Britain called the Teenage Cancer Trust. I've started now in America, which is the uh, Teen Cancer America. What we do is to try and provide spaces in, in hospitals that are just for teens. It, it's not research. We don't do anything, we, but we produce something. We produce something that you can walk into, you can touch. It's got everything that teenagers can want to live a, as normal a life as possible while they're going through some of the really severe cancers. You, I mean, you've got kids. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and you, I've got grandkids. You, and you, yes, yeah, so and me. How many do you got? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Little kids, <laughs> little teenage kids, <laughs> two little teenage great, grandkids. Though. I love that. Yeah. So I have this little game that I play, and this to end it, the best part about this, Roger, is the end of the interview. Thank you. And it's for the that. quickest part. I know, but <laughs> but you, it's it's called this or that, right? Uh, this yeah. or that. You, I don't want to hear well, maybe, oh well, yeah, no, this or that. You know, if you could just, you know, just okay. Ready? <laughs> I'm not that look in your eye. Go on in. Long hair or short hair? Depends what age. That's fucked, you know? He's a fu <laughs> he, Ladies and gentlemen, he's a fucking Pisces. He can't help himself, okay? No, you can't. They, they gotta go well, this I mean, way and that way. At my you? age, short hair. Short hair, I'm with you. Wait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you could turn back the hands of time, would you open for Jimi Hendrix or play after him? Always play before him. <laughs> He was okay. magic. He was. Well, wasn't you know, that the was Monterey great, Pop Festival? He, wasn't there some? Yeah, kind of but a... you. What people got to realise, and they really do need to know this. Young people need to know this. That all that stuff that Hendrix used to do with the amplifier and the guitar in the amp and the microphone, he stole all that from Pete. 
Absolutely. Oh, the who he was, was a... doing that four years before Hendrix did See, it. See, I knew that. Yeah. But you but still me... wouldn't want to follow him. But no, 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 but he had this animal quality. And it was... An the animal actual, The actual Jimmy, <laughs> the actual Jimmy was exactly the opposite. He was a very quiet, kind of poetically spoken, really gentle guy, you know. I never the met him. Opposite to the animal on the stage. Uh, do you prefer driving on the right-hand side of the road or the left-hand side of the road? I know it's stupid, but this is a stupid part of the show. <sighs> well, well, okay. are, you're you, asking me questions. You are, questions. Would you I'm rather live in Great middle. Britain or America, uh, basically? Uh, I'd rather drive in Britain because we're better drivers. Okay, there you go. I mean, you're, I mean better Jesus drive. Christ, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, whoa, easy whoa, now. Hold you, it here. Oh, God, you're animals you, on the road. Do you like recording or playing live? Better. Playing live. Absolutely. The last thing, when was the last time you beat Pete's ass? Oh. <laughs> 1973. <laughs> the year Montrose started. Roger, there you go. thank you. You're a gentleman. I'm, I'm telling you, you're one of my all-time heroes, and this is one of the biggest pleasures pleasure, I've ever Sam. had on doing the show you. is meeting you and having you be a nice guy. You don't know how you <laughs> sit there and go, oh, fuck. I. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you, everybody. Rock and roll road trip. Uh-uh. Roger Dalton, my guy. Thank you. Woo. Cheers, guys.
a sad man. 